said about President Obama. I'm going to quote you. He grew up and nobody knew him. Nobody knows who he is until later in his life. The whole thing is very strange. What are you driving at there? Are you a Bertha, well, Donald? Okay. Let, me, let me just say that I was a really good student at the best school. I'm not like a smart guy, okay? In the center of the stage tonight, businessman Donald Trump. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person? Again, we're looking for you to raise your hand now. Raise your hand now if you won't make that pledge tonight. Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump, to be clear, you're standing on a Republican primary. I fully understand. If I do win and I'm leading by quite a bit, uh, that's what I want to do. I can totally make that pledge. If I'm the nominee, I will pledge I will <laughs> not run as an independent. But uh, and I am discussing it with everybody. But I'm you know, talking about a lot of leverage. We want to win and we will win. One of these this is what's wrong. I mean, okay. this is what's wrong. He buys and sells politicians of all stripes. He's already, hey, look, look, he's already hedging his bet on the Clintons, okay? So if he doesn't run as a Republican, maybe he supports Clinton or maybe runs as an independent. Okay. But I'd say that he's already hedging his bets because he's used to buying politicians. Well, I've given him plenty of money. Talk about Megyn Kelly because you, you brought her up. Um, she did push you, pushed a lot of people. But what is it with you and Megyn Kelly? Well, I just don't respect her as a journalist. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. But when I came out there, you know, what am I doing? I'm not getting paid for this. I go out there, and, uh, you know, they start saying, lift up your arm if you're going to. Then I, then, and, you know, I didn't know there'd be 24 million people. I figured, but I knew it was going to be a big crowd because I get big crowds. I get ratings. They call me the ratings machine. So I have, uh, you know, she, she gets out, and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. But Mr. Trump, one of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several O'Donnell. was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter this country is in big trouble. We don't win anymore. We lose to China. We lose to Mexico. But what I say is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. But you know what? We so I'll, I'll just tell you, so I'm on the plane. And I see this vicious tweet, because I've been nice to Scott Walker. And, I, you know, he's a nice guy. He came up to my office like three, four months ago, presented me with a plaque, because I helped him with his election. I liked that he was fighting. You know, at least we, I didn't know what the hell he was doing, but he was fighting, and I like a fighter. Does that make sense? So I've been very nice to him. But he brings me this beautiful plaque. I don't know who pays for it. Does he pay for that, or does Wisconsin pay for it? I don't know. But it's beautiful. And I'm being very nice to him. And then today I read this horrible uh, statement from his fundraiser about Trump. I said, oh, finally I can attack. <laughs> finally. So if it weren't for me, you wouldn't even be talking about illegal immigration, Chris. You wouldn't even be talking about it. This was not a subject that was on anybody's mind until I brought it up at my announcement. Since then, many killings, murders, crime, drugs pouring across the border, our money going out and the drugs coming in. And I said, we need to build a wall. And it has to be built quickly. And I don't mind having a big, beautiful door in that wall.
First of all, Hillary Clinton gave her first interview yesterday in a long, long time, first national interview. She gave it to CNN. You give interviews all the time. You're out there. You're talking extemporaneously. Why do you think Hillary Clinton is not talking? Well, Anderson, she's got a lot to hide. Mr. Trump, Obamacare is one of the things you call a disaster. Complete disaster, yes. Saying it needs to be repealed and replaced. Correct. Now, 15 years ago, you called yourself a liberal on health care. You were for a single-payer system, a Canadian-style system. Why were you for that then, and why aren't you for it now? Uh, first of all, I'd like to just go back to one. In July of 2004, I came out strongly against the war with Iraq because it was going to destabilize the Middle East and I'm the only one on the stage that knew that and had the vision to say it and that's exactly what happened. But what I'd like to see is a private system without the artificial lines around every state. I have a big company with thousands and thousands of employees. Okay. I've given millions. Now, I've given millions to everybody. So do you give though based on principles or do you give based on who's going to do things for you politically? They all love me. Let's put it that way. They all love me. I'm a very, very, I did very nicely in life. They're talking about the building we're sitting in right now. They're saying Trump Tower was built on undocumented immigrant backs. That How many years ago was that? This was, what, Th 75? 35 years 35 ago. 35 years ago. Yeah, they said 35 years ago. But this was a court case. 200 illegal immigrants, Polish workers, guys working for $5. I Anderson. I hire a contractor. The contractor then hires a subcontractor. They have people. I don't know. I don't remember. That was so many years ago. 35 years ago, they said we had some This was a court case settled in 1999. You settled okay, with it's them. all right. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I remember the case. Frankly, I remember it very well. Uh, we hire contractors. The contractor, very highly prestigious, very good con They go out, hire subcontractors. Sometimes the subcontractors will have people working, but, you know, it's pretty far down yeah, the line. Was, this was 200 Polish workers working without hard hats. Pretty noticeable Anderson, on a union job. When you have to go back 35 years to tell me about something, I think that's pretty pathetic, to be honest with you. Mr. Right, Trump, right, hold right, on one second. I got a news flash. I know. Hold on, Senator news, Paul. News flash. The Republican Party's been fighting against a single-payer okay. system for a decade. See, I think you're on the wrong side of this if you're still arguing for a single-payer system. Not, I'm not. I don't think you heard me. You're having a hard time tonight. All right. Let <laughs> Mr. Trump, it's not just your past support for single-payer health care. You've also supported a host of other liberal policies. You've also donated to several de Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton included, Nancy Pelosi. You explained away those donations, saying you did that to get business-related favors. And you said recently, quote, when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do. You better believe it. So what specifically did they do? If I ask them, if I need them, you know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand, a lot of money. Not me. Not me. <laughs> but you're welcome to give me a check, Donald, if you want. Many of them. Actually, to be clear, That's he right. supported not, Charlie Crist. Not Mike. Hey, Charlie, but I, hey, I have, Donald, if you end I have campaign, campaign, I hope you will, will tell you that our system is broken. I give to many people. Before this, before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them. They are there for me. So and that's get? a broken system. So what would you get from Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi? Well, I'll tell you what. With Hillary Clinton, I said, be at my wedding, and she came to my wedding. You know why? <laughs> she had no choice because I gave. Good. So we are going to now uh, take a few questions. But I would have said... Folks, we want those people back. And if they said no, I would have said bye-bye, and I would have doubled and tripled the sanctions, and we would have had them back very quickly. Very, very quickly. Believe me, we would have had them back quickly. Okay, let's take a few questions, and then I go to Phoenix, where we have a crowd that's slightly larger than anticipated. Okay? Okay, who are the questions? Where are they? Do you have a mic? Good, go ahead. I have a mic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trump. I'm Roberto Salinas. I'm actually from Mexico. I'm incredibly insulted by the remarks. I, I was I waiting made. for this. Of course you were. Good. But, hey, I'm a friend of Freedom Fest. Good. I believe in freedom. I believe in the rule of law. Good. I believe in property rights. My heart goes out to Mr. Jamil. Good. There are illegal immigrants that are horrible and terrible. There are also legal immigrants that are horrible and terrible. It's true. So it's a question about rule of law. I am going to ask a question. Ask a question, please. My question is, 
Did the governor of Mexico ask you to come up here and make this? Of course, of course. Okay, go ahead, ask your question.